Hello, my name is Jack Heineke, and today's devotional comes from the book of Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no guilty verdict, no punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus, who believe in him as personal Lord and Savior. For the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, which is the law of our new being, has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that is overcome sin and remove its penalty, its power, being weakened by the flesh, man's nature without the Holy Spirit, God did. He sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful man as an offering for sin. And he condemned sin in the flesh, subdued it, and overcame it in the person of his own Son, so that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not live our lives in the way of the flesh, guided by worldliness and our sinful nature, but live our lives in the way of the Spirit, guided by His power. Right before Romans 8 is Romans 7. Yep, the Bible follows the numerical system too. Romans 7 is Paul stating what I like to call his Dr. Seuss passage, because that's what he sounds like to me there. It's funny, but man does it hit home big time. Prior to this, Paul has laid out an excellent argument about the law, which are essentially the Ten Commandments, and that the law is spiritual and beautiful, and that he is in agreement with God's laws. His flesh, although, used the law as a weapon against his very flesh. Don't we all do that? We wield our knowledge of law against others and ourselves. We do this by our judgment of those in the world who aren't living up to our standards, and then that self-critical judge who resides within us uses it against ourselves. You know, like when someone like Will Smith slaps Chris Rock, there was immediate judgment from the crowd either approving or disapproving the act. And then judgment against the approvers and the disapprovers. Social media came alive with these judgments. The same thing has been happening with politics since the invention of politics. The same thing happens when a couple separates. There are those who go on that side and those who go on the other side. Now there may be literal laws at play in all these situations or not, but the point is that this is what we humans do. We weaponize our emotional responses to just about every event that grabs our attention. And we also weaponize it against ourselves. We can go on a diet, we can get a gym membership, and if we're successful at these endeavors when we achieve success, we will still find fault with something about our bodies. We are seldom ever satisfied with the results and internally the courtroom comes to order. And we as judge, jury, and executioner continue listening to that voice within that has been nothing but self-critical since we can remember as if it was God himself executing judgment against us and then we determine our sentence based on that voice's finding fault with us and the world around us. We determine our truth based on the findings of that voice when that voice should be the last thing listened to if it's ever listened to at all. By the way, that voice, that's the voice of the unredeemed flesh. If you haven't noticed yet, that voice doesn't have your best interest at heart because it doesn't want you to be in a place of peace. It wants you worried, depressed, and in a non-stop pity party, and it wants to give the world a piece of its mind that by the time it's done, there won't be anything left of that mind. It's an instrument. It becomes a weapon of Satan, and as such, needs to be put in its proper place which is a place where it holds no influence over ourselves or anyone else. This is why the Bible tells us to take thought captive, every thought captive, 
and to make it obedient to Christ. Don't make excuses, just do that. God has given you everything you need to accomplish this. And when it tries to tell you more of its nonsense, tell that voice to shut up and show it that it doesn't hold a candle to the thoughts of Christ. Tell it who is in charge here and make it obey. I know for a fact that this works because I've done it more times than I can actually remember. Every time I have a horrible negative imaginary thought about my kids that something horrible is happening to them and it goes to the worst case scenario, I literally have to stop, put on the brakes and I tell myself to shut up. This is not what is happening in reality right now and it works every time. Because as the mind then looks at reality and what is going on and it assesses it and it's like, you know what, you're right. What you're afraid of, what you're fearing is not reality right now. So why do we make ourselves crazy like that? If we aren't in charge of our own minds, then who is? And as I said earlier, this is the voice of the unredeemed flesh and it doesn't want your brokenness to be repaired and redeemed. It wants you to stay broken to which God says, well, I don't want that for my kid and I'll do what needs to be done to get to you and to fix you. And it appears to me that God really wants to fix what ails us. We know that voice intimately when we fail as it tells us to heck with it. Eat the half gallon of ice cream anyway because you're nothing but a big fat loser anyway. And that's what we believe to be the truth. God says, that was never true about you. These emotions can be so powerful that they guide our lives. And these emotions are so fueled with hatred that they take our lives. Hatred because the truth is that we are all struggling with our brokenness. And any voice towards a broken person that sounds like this sounds like hate. A sinner is described as a broken person in the Bible. When I read the two sections in John 3 and 10 where Jesus states that I did not come to condemn and I came to give life and an abundance of life, I was literally stunned the first time I read those. I sat there for a long time letting that begin to sink in because prior to reading that, I thought that's what God was all about was condemning us. I thought that's what Christianity was all about was condemnation. Well, I found out that it's not what God is all about, therefore it's not what Christianity is about. I thought all that because I did not know God, and I did not know that God sees a sinner as a broken person in need of tender, loving repair, which is me. God isn't just some far-off being waiting to execute judgment against us all. He's the Father daddy waiting for just a sign of his kid showing up on the horizon returning to him so that he can run towards his kid and throw his graceful arms around his kid and in utter delight throw a party to end all parties i too have weaponized the law against the world and myself paul makes the case in romans that this is what the wonderful beautiful law does to all of us because the law is ineffective to repair a broken person. The law is a thermometer that tells us that this person has a fever, this person needs repair. But sw Satan has twisted the original intent of the law along with the cooperation of our flesh and has taught us all to grab it like a baseball bat and just start swinging until we make contact which is the easiest spectator sport ever devised. And Paul sounds like our internal critic to me in Romans 7 as he describes himself as he has 20 some years of being a Christian leader who still doesn't get it right. This is the Dr. Seuss passage I referred to earlier. He states essentially that I don't understand myself. I don't practice what I'm supposed to do, instead I do the very thing that I know is wrong. I'm doing the very thing that I hate. And if I am habitually doing the very things I don't want to do, and that I hate that, it means that I agree with God's law. The law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh. The willingness to do good is within me, but the doing it is not. 
Doing the good is what I want to do, but I practice the very evil instead. So within me is the good that I agree with and want to do, but so is the evil that has captured me and it's part of my desires and appetites, and it wages war inside of me. What a wretched man I am! Who will save me from this non-stop, never-ending war? Jesus Christ. If Romans 7 sounds familiar to you, you're in very good company. It really sounds very familiar to me. I can't tell you how grateful I am that these words from one of the most impactful, inspirational, effective Christian leaders of all times are here in the Bible. This explains what's been going on within me since I can remember, which means that God knows and understands. This internal war goes on within all of us. That sometimes all too often results in what we see on the news or hear about on social media or impacts our very lives is the reason why God sent his son to die for our sin. The only answer to that war, that internal war, is Jesus Christ. Then Paul writes what we read in Romans 8, that there is no condemnation, no punishment for those in Jesus Christ, because the law of the Spirit is the law of our new being, which has set us free from the law of sin and death. What the old law could not do, the new law has already done. The old law was weakened by our flesh, so God brought forth into our existence about 2,000 years ago a new law. That new law became flesh and dwelt among us, and he became a man who sacrificed himself as the only perfect sacrifice available to render the old law meaningless in relation to rescuing and repairing the brokenness of our sinful flesh. This action that God did fulfilled the requirements of the old law within the broken sinners who do not live by the ways of the flesh anymore, but instead live and walk by and with the Spirit. It doesn't say to walk perfectly, as Paul explained that he didn't do that, but that he tries and he really wants to, and that he will continue to trust in God and will use the strength of God that God supplies all believers to walk in the Spirit. Paul's primary purpose was to walk in the Spirit just to obey his dad in heaven. To run the race dad made for him and to finish that race in victory. Paul doesn't tell us to keep beating ourselves up, but to put the bat down and leave it where it sits. That bat is a weapon of Satan, so it has no place in the hands of any Christian to be used against others or ourselves. The weapon placed in our hands is the sword of the Spirit, it tells us that in the book of Ephesians, which is the Bible itself, not to be used to knock someone upside the head, but to, use, to be used to repair the brokenness within us and all around us. The legalism that men use of the old law will and does kill us. The spirit of the new law is what gives us the promise of, et of eternal life and a life that touches every other life with the life of Christ. I thank you for staying with me for this long today and I pray that you have an awesomely blessed day today.